This video shows you how to put a new client into Plat. I'll say client throughout, even though you can configure the system to say service user or customer or whatever you like. As with pretty much every other data type within the system, to create a new client record, you click on new and you select client or your alternative from the menu. You get a uh, multi-tab form and uh, the tabs that you see are determined by the way your organization has been configured. That's the organization of the user rather than the client because you can set the client to any of the organizations below the, uh, the user. And at this point, the system doesn't know where the client is going to go. So much of the first three tabs is uh, the same as for the care worker, which uh, is covered in a, another video, which uh, you might want to look at. So I'll just fill in the a few fields. Um, this SS ref number is the number for this person on the local authority system if uh, if they've been referred by the local authority this field here the nhs number um it's obvious what it is but what's not obvious is that it's got quite complex validation so you can't just put in any old number it needs to be the valid nhs number formatted in the in the correct way uh, and that formatting is uh, is done at the back end so if you get it wrong it's not going to come up red here it only comes up with an error when you try and save the record the next field the organization is slightly different from the equivalent field on the care worker form that's because a client has to belong to the the lowest level of organizations uh, a leaf organization if you will if you see the organizations as some sort of tree structure so I'm logged on as a Joan Demo admin user here who belongs to Demo Care. And if you have looked at the Care Worker video, you'll remember that Demo Care comprises two geographic organisations that sit under it, the southern area and the northern area. Now, a client cannot belong to the uh, top level of uh, the organisation, the uh, top level of the structure. It has to belong to a leaf node. And so the only options available are northern area and southern area. So we'll put Charles in northern. The next field priority uh, is whether this person is, essentially requires care. You know, even if uh, even if there's snow all over the place and you're short of staff, this person is going to still be your top priority. Some people call this rag for red, amber, green. Let's uh, we'll set Charles to medium. Allergies here, they come out on various reports and uh, very accessible on the uh, on the point of care app. Warnings also shown on the point of care app and comments shown on the point of care app. And this uh, checkbox here suppresses uh, alarms for certain instance, incidences. The address form the address tab rather of this form is exactly the same as the one for care workers so I'm just going to quickly populate that. As you can see I've now populated all the addresses and uh, I'm just going to save the record so that the system geocodes the address. I'm going to go back to it and we're going to see where the system has put the address and look at what we can do to make it more accurate. So if I click on this button here, this little globe, it will show me where the system thinks that address is. Now, let's say it's got it wrong by a few houses and it's just the, you know, this, this house here. Then uh, what I can do so that the care worker has got access to exactly the location that, uh, that they need to visit uh, on their Plat Mobile point of care system is put in the what three words of uh, wherever it really is. So. Uh, I clicked on the what three words button I get this uh, dialogue here and I click on the uh, the default what three words and it opens what three words 
in a different tab I choose the the house that it really is so let's say it's this one and the front doors over this side of it and then I copy the new what three words loose whirlwind options go back there put it in there click OK and uh, this button's now got the what three words logo in red showing me that I have overridden the uh, the system's geocoding and uh, that location will now be sent on the uh, on the mobile app to care workers who have to go and visit the client so they should have no no problem locating the uh, the entrance to the house or whatever what three words being accurate to just three meters as you can see the contacts tab is slightly different in clients than it was in the care workers because of the addition of this uh, data access field so i'm going to put uh, put a contact in and uh, we'll use will who's a care worker but we'll pretend that uh, he's uh, an emergency contact for uh, charles rob he's his son-in-law let's say okay so the the new field is this data access field and uh, there's four options here so we can say that will has got no access to the client data will gets an email after the booking telling him what happened in the booking with the log etc the exact details are set up by your system administrator um, will can have access to plat mobile and again exactly what access he's granted on plat mobile is configured by your system administrator or he gets both of those so let's say he gets uh, he gets plat mobile access and then again depending on how your system is set up by your your admin something happens just to sort of say you know this person needs permission to do this just this checkbox version of asking for permission is just uh, like stop think is this okay and uh, I'm gonna say yeah this is okay so now will will be sent to or when I save the uh, when I save the record will will be sent an email telling him what to do how to get into the system and so forth so in order not to uh, have the system send will Kane an email I'm just going to change his data access back to null and uh, move on through the next couple of tabs the care plan tab um, is dealt with very thoroughly in a, a playlist of training videos which uh, there will be a link to in the comments of this video calendar will skip and come back to in a little while let's look at the medication tab so the first couple of fields involve lookups of data that we access from the uh, the NHS and we'll search the uh, the area around your organization the radius will have been configured by your system admin for matching um, in this case GP surgeries or GP names so I could have searched for Crowell and it would have brought up Crowell K at Poundbury doctor's surgery but okay so I will select that uh, that particular GP and then I'll type in the name of the pharmacy and we'll see that that pharmacy is associated with that doctor surgery in the medication contacts I can select either the GP or any of the uh, contacts of this client so these are the people to be contacted in a medication related emergency and this is printed out on a couple of reports let's say it's the GP and uh, adverse reactions that we might expect medications and how to handle them and the care finished field is used when you're using the system only as a, an email system to tell the system when medication is no longer required uh, this checkbox uh, suppresses uh, alerts for being some from being raised um, it's useful if we know that the client is in an area without a mobile data signal uh, otherwise the system will start raising alerts when the uh, the meds should have been administered even though there's no way of getting the message back from the point of care to the system and finally we need to say when the uh, when the client requires their medication okay so many systems will tie medication directly into bookings um, 
and we don't do that because bookings can move but the ideal time for the administration of medication won't move so we want to record the ideal time for the administration of the medication and then match the bookings to it and we'll see how to do that in a in another video so let's see we have uh, some morning meds and the morning meds happen at 10 o'clock and we'll have some uh, tea time meds which happen at six o'clock and you'll notice that uh, this defaults to uh, Sunday generally the, the beginning of the next week but you can you can change that And moving on now to the financial tab. So on the financial tab, we put in all of the, the details about who pays for the the care and uh, what contract the uh, the payments are calculated under. So let's say that this person is being funded, at least partially, by the local authority. We've got the local authority set up as a purchaser within the system and as you could see we could uh, go and have a look at the purchaser record by clicking there now they'll have a reference for uh, Charles so I'll call it CA1 Charles RB1 and the contract is the Wessex County Council contract and they're going to start receiving care on the 30th of the 5th but let's say that uh, Charles also pays for some self-funded top-up. So we're going to add another contract. I'm going to call this the self-funding. And the purchaser in this case is self-funded. So you can see that this is populated by all of the um, what we call social funders, the people who can pay for, for anyone, the uh, all of the contacts of the client, and then there's this uh, self-funded option here, so he pays for himself. Self-funder, we don't really need a reference, but we do need a contract, and that'll be private, and that's going to start next week. Now you will have noticed that when we set uh, set this person up as a self-funder, this field appeared, the accounts ref, which is the, the reference within our account system for Charles as a self-funder. Okay, so that's all that we're going to do for this setup at the moment and we're going to save the record and we'll have a quick look at the calendar so um, a thing that's different between the client calendars and the care worker calendars is this uh, this area here which tells us which is the active contract now most clients or many clients will only have one contract and this area will be blank and when you create a booking for the uh, for the client it'll use their only contract for that booking but in this case because Charles has got two bookings we need to know which one is going to be used when we enter a, an event onto the uh, the calendar so his contracts both start next week so if we move forward a week we'll see that his med sessions are, are there and we'll put in a booking on the Wessex pays contract at nine o'clock and that's a care booking, Charles RB Wessex Pays, that's absolutely fine. So we can just save that. And uh, I forgot to make it a bit longer. So let's, uh, let's edit it and uh, make it a two hour booking. So you can see more easily what we've got. The, um, the med session has been kind of adopted by the event if you like and uh, it appears appears just there if we want to edit the meds we uh, we click on the med session and uh, it comes up with this uh, this dialog and we're going to uh, enter some meds for Charles so let's uh, let's give him a some uh, I don't know Paracetamol, that's always the uh, always the easy one to do. And uh, so that uh, that data also is taken from an NHS database. You can actually put in sort of more uh, more data than I just did, so that it's uh, restricted to um, 
you know, a smaller number of options. So if we wanted particularly the effervescent ones, then we could, uh, we could type in effer and we'd uh, only get those options coming up that contain all of those three strings. Uh, are these in a blister pack? What is the dose? Is this a PRN med, an as needed med? And when does he have these meds? So let's say that he has these meds every morning and every tea time um, every day. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll save that. And um, we could add some more meds here, but uh, we're not going to bother. So this uh, has now become brighter because it's actually got a medicine. It's not just a, a matched session. And uh, we can see here that this booking does not have a care worker unassigned to it. It's a care booking, you can see the start and end time, and there's no worker assigned to it. And it happens that uh, our system admin has configured an unassigned care booking to be displayed with bright red. Let's uh, let's see how we would go about assigning a care worker, just to change the colour. Okay, so now that care worker has been assigned to the booking, the colour of the booking has changed. So we're going to do something slightly different for the afternoon, and we're going to have Charles pay for his, uh, his own care on his self-funding contract. And we're going to put it in a little distance away from the uh, desired medication time. So we're going to um, draw a booking between 2.30 and 3.30. And we're going to change the uh, client here to Charles Arrowby self-funding. So we're keeping the client but changing the, uh, changing the contract. And uh, save this booking. And we'll see that the red blob appears, but it does not get the med session associated with it because the gap between those two uh, two things is too great. But if that's the only time that we can get a care worker to Charles ROB on that day, then we can associate the uh, the med session with the booking manually by clicking on the pill and dragging and dropping it on top of that event, and then you'll see. That the system sort of displays it in the same way as the uh, automatically matched event. Uh, another thing I could have done, I'll do this on, on the Tuesday, rather than uh, going around and re-entering the client with the different contracts, I can change the calendar so that the default contract that's used for new events is the self-funding one rather than West Six Pays. And I do that by going into options and saying that the active contract is the self-funding one. And when I update that, this gets displayed here as self-funding. And let's put it a bit closer this time. So if we put it here, if I just draw that event on there, then uh, when I go in here, we'll see that the self-funding contract is the one that's used. The med session was associated with it. And uh, just for the sake of completeness, I will allocate a uh, care worker. You'll notice that um, the care workers that are available have got these um, little donuts um, with shaded areas next to them. These tell you the degree of the degree of completion of the donut tells you what a good fit the care worker is for the uh, the client. And uh, what we've got here is somebody who is only four minutes on foot away from the client and if we go down to the next one oh, they also are a walker and they'd have to walk 30 minutes to get to uh, to the client so clearly Jude is better but they're, they're equal in other respects they, uh, they're both available and uh, they have never visited him not surprisingly because he is a new client so I'll uh, save Jude and we'll see that the calendar updates the colour of the uh, the booking to reflect the fact that it's now allocated. The last thing we're going to look at in this video is the client context menu. This 
this menu here. Uh, one option is that we can view the client as a purchaser and uh, I can do that by right clicking on that option it'll open the same person as a purchaser in a different tab and uh, a purchaser record has got the accounts ref which is also available on the client and some options about you know, invoicing details and stuff. Going back to the context menu we can see that we can add a note to the client, send email, generate letter, view the journal, blah blah blah. But the thing that we're interested in is one of these reports down here, the medication reports in particular, um, because we're intending for this client to be visited by uh, care workers using the Plat Mobile system and using QR codes for logging in, we need to have some record of the client QR code uh, at the client site and we're going to do that using this uh, this document here. So. I'm just going to generate that document. It'll be emailed to me. So here is the pen picture report, uh, including the QR code that the uh, care worker would scan when checking in and checking out of bookings. And that's the end of this video about inputting clients. The next video will cover scheduling in much greater detail.